This is the Stay Healthy Experience, hosted by Robert Ferguson, Daniel Baldwin, and Barbara Chris. And today, we had a great conversation with actress, athlete, pro wrestler, model for over 40 years. She's been in TV entertainment since she was five. And I first discovered her myself as a glow wrestler. Let's break in to what you will find to be an entertaining, thought-provoking, and fun conversation. Started in Glow in 86, the end of 1986. So, you know, for the 80s to have women wrestling was, was pretty not, not happening. But this was cool, and I guess they were a hit. But long story short, at the end of the television show, it said, do you want to be a Glow girl? At the end of it, it had a number, and I'm like, huh. Okay, and he looks at me, he goes, you should send in your headshot and everything and go try out. And I'm like, Dad, are you serious? Oh. <laughs> so I did. And next thing you know, I'm in North Hollywood and audition. And the director's there, uh, Matt Stimber, Steve Blanche, the writer, was there. And tons of girls all over the world were there. I don't know how many girls. There must have been 360, 70, you know, girls. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to get this. And I was blonde, tan, because I was hanging out at the beach and playing volleyball, because I'm a native of California. So I was born and raised in La Crescenta, California. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I went there and, and I got it. He's like, yeah, you can go to the tryouts in Las Vegas. You didn't get to be a glow girl, but you got that part. There was like a three-step process mm -hmm. in auditioning for glow. So then I went on to Vegas, and there was probably 80 girls that got chose to go through boot camp training, military training. So I didn't know how to do a push-up to save my life. And we're talking not sissy push-ups, we're talking military style push-ups. So um, you go through this combat training, like military, you go run through the tires, you run around the warehouse with your arms over your ears for hours until he tells you to drop it. You do hyper extensions off the wrestling ring that was in the warehouse. And the girl sits on your legs while you're doing your hyperextension. Oh, right. So that's pretty tough. Yeah. So you go through that. And as you're going through the training, they look at you and they analyze you as far as the character. If they can give you a character. And if you get through the training as well. If you don't wimp out. You don't show signs of distress. And you don't complain. All those things. So um, it was down to 36 of us girls. And they picked the characters. And some of the girls had to do drastic changes, like Beastie the Road Warrior. She had gorgeous, long, blonde hair. She was a thick girl, but beautiful, right? So they made her change and go into a mohawk. <laughs> she had to shave oh. all her hair. All her beautiful hair, she was like in tears. But this is what actresses do, right? To get into to it, you know, to a, a great show like Glow was in the 80s. All these girls were dying to do. We had one girl that committed suicide. She tempted to anyway she got fired she was one of the girls that didn't make the cut so she goes into the hotel room at the Riviera Hotel that's where we were stationed at and she slid her wrist I won't forget that time that was horrible and I was there with the director when he opened the door and there was like blood everywhere anyway long story short he let her stay on she wasn't that good of a wrestler you know um but he felt bad for her. but there was 36 girls at stayed, so the rest of them left they didn't make the cut. They fell out. Whatever the case was, they couldn't hack it. So, you know, and that's how I got into Glow. Now, my character was, ironically, if blonde and tan and dingy, who would you think back in the 60s, close to, which was Marilyn Monroe and her best friend, which was Jane Mansfield. So uh, Matt Simber was married to Jane Mansfield. He was the last husband during her death it wasn't mickey uh mickey hargitay mariska's dad um so matt simber was married to jane and he says you know you remind me of my ex-wife and i said who's that and he said jane mansfield i'm like what i go really so that's my character was molded after jane mansfield wow As sunny the california girl the blonde bombshell and then um i sang <laughs> because he asked me what i did and my previous where I go, well, I like to sing. I like to dance, you know. And he goes, would you sing knock-knock jokes? And I go, what? <laughs> Who sings knock-knock jokes? <laughs> so when I would come out to the ring, I had to sing knock-knock jokes to piss off my opponent. And uh, the writing was like, you know, thanks for the memories, Bob Hope, 
So I would say thanks, thanks for the memories. It's great to be on the scene, to beat the big Marine. And then my uh, Corporal Kelly, who I was wrestling at the time, would attack me on that note, you know, <laughs> knock me out. Mm -hmm. And I lost a lot because I was the dingy baby face. The Hill always carried it, always won. They always wore the crown. And Glow is a crown, not a belt, even though I have the Glow belt here, mm -hmm. which was honored because we were honored at the CAC and the Wrestling Hall of Fame. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, so, so just for clarity, childhood actors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. had a big moment where you became a gorgeous lady of, of wrestling. Where did Playboy fall into that? Was that after Glow or was that before? No, no, it was after. It was 10 years after. Okay. Ironically. So it had, it had nothing to do with uh, Glow. Um, Gene, well, I call him Uncle Gene because we're really close, and Paul Stanley. Um, I got to know the other two really well, Peter and Ace, after, but Gene Simmons, is like a family friend, but um, they were doing the kiss shoot and he asked me if I wanted to cast the issue and if I wanted to pose in the magazine. I'm like, oh gosh, I don't know, you know. My, yeah, so um, I actually casted the issue with Tommy Thayer and Tommy Thayer was with Black and Blue and now he's Ace Freely in the kiss band. So he used to be the roadie and now he's you know, Ace Freely because Ace and Peter are no longer part of the band. And if you know the rock and roll, you know, stories there, but they're gone and out. And there's been a lot of rivalry between all four of them. It's been kind of crazy, but the shoot was pretty cool. And to, you know, have the rock and roll time in the era, I wasn't really allowed to listen to Kiss when I was young. My parents were very strict. My dad was a cop at one point. So I was raised really strict and, uh, you know, pretty sheltered, if you will. So KISS was not a thing <laughs> until I got older. My dad had passed on, or I probably wouldn't have posed in Playboy. He probably wouldn't have, you know, allowed that for sure. But I was 36 already. So it was a blessing. And what a fun set. I mean, each set was so cool to, to be on that set and dress in the rock and roll garb. And they go by again the girls' faces. So all the playmates in this issue, and there was quite a few, um, they look at the girls' face and they're like, okay, you get to be Peter. You get to be Jean. You know, you get to be Ace. So they go by the shape of the face for each, because uh, we wear the, the makeup. And I got to be Paul Stanley. And I'm like, yes, because <laughs> he was the sexiest. <laughs> he was so cute. Nice. Well, well <laughs> Barbara. Paul Stanley, right? You know, one of Barbara's uh, like goals in life, if, if Playboy was still around, she would love to pick your brain. Um. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I know, Playboy's changed so much. It's really changed. I talked to a lot of the, uh, a lot of my girlfriends that are, you know, were playmates, and two of them were Hef's, you know, ex-girlfriends, if you will. And uh, we're all saying, wow, it's just, sad that we can't even get books anymore the book side shut down all these things started changing like I don't know even 10 years ago when Hef started getting sick things started changing not for the better he wanted it to return to like the 60s era to have the clean cut old school playboy which is what I loved because I, I used to uh, my dad had playboy I don't know how many men if they say they didn't look at playboy uh right you must be gay you know because who who doesn't right they've got great articles ha ha but i mean it's a classy book and i'm not just saying it because i'm in it it really is i didn't like any of the other you know i was asked to do hustler and i'm like oh my god no no way i would never do it you know to me that was like not pretty not cool so and i have girls i have two daughters it was already bad enough to face them a playboy but they thought it was cool because it was Kiss, you know. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, you know, it was, it was really cool. Hmm? See, so, so Daniel's yeah. showing, he's showing a photo right now um, of he and Hugh Hefner. Come on now. Yes. Uh, Daniel was a regular at the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> I had a private <laughs> room. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I like thought I saw you running down the stairs there a few times. Uh huh. <laughs> did you ever go? Did you ever go on the tour with Hef 
in the mansion because it was it was it, it was quite the thing to have him take you on it. Did you ever get to see that? Oh yeah, it was beautiful there. I had to work there. What we call the blue haired special night. I don't know if you know those the blue haired special, which a lot of his friends were like really, you know, contributors, if you will. And he would have a lot of the girls hang out there in bikinis. Some were topless. Some became less. Depends how much ecstasy you would do, you know, um, and party. But you got to entertain the guys there. And actually, he paid the girls pretty well, too. Some of the girls. But um, I did a few of those parties. And I'm like, oh, my God. I couldn't even have a conversation with some of the girls. Not, hey, not knocking it. But seriously, I was like, huh how old are you? Because I re remember I was 36 when I posed. So all these other girls were like in their 20s. Yeah. And uh, to have a conversation with them, forget it. But I was like the house mom. I just like look over them and make sure they're okay and stuff. Half at one point did not like me because of his ex-wife. I actually look a lot like his wife, his ex-wife, mm -hmm. who has Marsden and Kirsten and, and his, uh, well, he has three, three sons. So there was like a little bit of, I felt sad because he blew his, his cigar smoke at my face every time we were like in a circle. And I would look at the other girls, I go, I don't think he likes me. He keeps doing that. And I took it like he was insulting me. And I got really sad. <laughs> I was like, he doesn't like me. And they're like, well, let me show you a picture. And he, maybe this is why you guys look a lot alike. And I'm like, oh, because at that time they did not get along, you know. Now, did, but did, he was an amazing man, amazing man. And I, everyone thought that he was doing all these girls at once. Did, did you believe that, Daniel? Because honestly, he didn't. You know, he couldn't. There was no um, way. He had one girlfriend and he had a lot of them around him. Yeah, I, you know, I knew half from like 87 through, you know, the late, you know, 90s or mid 90s, you know, when, when, when he was, I think it got pretty wild there in like the mid, when it really blew up there was in the mid 80s, you know, when there was a lot of cocaine being used by people, it was more out and accepted in Hollywood. I mean, you could go into bars and in the VIP and they'd be doing drugs right on the table with, with security around them, you know, I mean, and and the that's, mansion got, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the mansion got that. pretty wild. There was a a ten year run there, and you would think it was, you know, it was it was always, you know, James Caan in the in the late seventies and stuff like that. It was pretty wild, but by the mid eighties is when I thought it got the craziest there. Mid eighties. Mid eighties to late eighties and just into the nineties, because a new a, a new animal was born. You know, the Brat Pack and that whole thing, and they oh, were really. Yeah. They were really wild, you know, that, that whole run there with those guys was pretty insane. Right. See, so my, my issue was 99, so I was there around 98, 99, 2000, that era. Yeah, That's it, was, with Tommy it, was, Lee. it was tame by then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tommy Lee. No, well, yeah, Tommy Lee and, and Pamela would spice it up, let me tell you. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And also uh, Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray was there a lot. Oh, I love him. He's so funny. What a good guy. Yeah, Sugar Ray. Um, um, but you're talking about, yeah, the 80s. Do you remember, because that's kind of how Todd and I reconnected, was um, Club Wola. Club Wola was under uh, where the Beverly Hill Center is. It was behind the Beverly Hill Center. Huh. It was a private huh. membership. That's where everyone would go in. No. Todd Bridges, that's when I think Todd get pulled over with his Porsche. I was there with the owner, Walter Shue, because I think Walter owned Pedafini's and mm. the other clubs. Yeah, but uh, yeah, crazy times. And you're right, there was always cocaine everywhere. It was just flowing. Like people would just do it right there on the table. I'm like, this is crazy. Wow. Yeah, those were the good old days mm -hmm. that we survived. <laughs> Still, I live, I really, through it, you know, man. I made it. I made it out the other I mean, side. I can't believe it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We talk about it. I talk about it with Todd because I watched him go through a lot of stuff that he went through. And ironically, we knew a lot of the same people when he's going to his meetings. I knew Tony Moorhead, who was the head of the AA meetings, like in Santa Monica and stuff. And I 
you know, ask him. And he's like, yeah, Todd Bridges is in there and a few other people. And I'm like, well, I'm glad. I'm glad they're in there, you know. I was too much of a control freak. I couldn't go overboard with, with things, you know. I did plenty of it at Lala because I was his, the owner's girlfriend. So, and I see Prince and all these people in there and they'd be leaving, but they're all like in their own world. And then you see Todd Bridges and he would be out. Oh, OJ would come in a lot. I remember OJ there. OJ did a lot of partying there. Wow. Hey, I got a name for you. I want to ask you if you remember. So what years were you wrestling? Um, I'm 1986 to 1991 when we went to pay-per-view. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember Big John Studd? Of course. Okay, yes. so John did something to me that to this day, I have never seen another human being do, and I don't think I will ever see. Maybe Andre the Giant could have done it, but I was on a movie set, and John was one of the bad guys um, uh, on, on, on this set, and I was even the worst guy, so he, we, were, we were nemesis. And um, um, we're sitting around with Mickey Rourke and Don Johnson and all these stunt guys, and Mickey leans over and goes, well, you know, Baldwin wrestled. He wrestled in high school and college. <laughs> and, I, and, and, of course, I didn't realize this was the absolute worst possible thing I ever could have said. So I looked up at John and I said, <laughs> I looked up at John and I went, well, I wrestled NCAA wrestling, college wrestling, like real wrestling. And as soon as I said, like, real wrestling, uh -oh. he looked at me and he That's went, it. what, you think what I do is not real? And he stood up. And now John Studd was <laughs> six nine. <laughs> 400 pounds almost and he and he was noticeably agitated and he's walking toward me around the table and i'm looking out i'm not a little guy at the time i'm i'm six almost two and i weigh 230 and i'm in pretty good shape and i was a very good wrestler so i looked at him and i thought he's he's coming like it was a big cafeteria <laughs> table that we were having lunch at the movie so he, he had to walk down nine people come around but he's coming yelling still so i know is he going to hit me? Do I need to duck under and take this guy down? What do I got to do? And he comes at me and he puts his hand out. Now his hands were the size of a canned ham. I mean, they were <laughs> gigantic. He's one of the only human beings that I'm going to demonstrate. You can't see it. But when he shook my hand, his hand went like this around my hand and his fingers came all the way up and touched his own wrist again. He enveloped my entire hand and his fingers came around and touched his wrist all the way over here. They were this big, his hands. Wow. And so he put his yeah. hand on my shoulder. Now I weighed 235 pounds probably right around there. <laughs> and he squeezed my shoulder and picked me up by my shoulder, not under my arm. Oh my he took God. one hand, put it on my shoulder, and picked me up off the ground. My feet were going like this, dangling with one hand. <laughs> and he went, you did it, he's shaking me. And I'm going <laughs> like this, like a dog. And I realized he's got me in the air with one hand. And he's going, you think I'm the turnbuckle with Andres? And then he let me go. And I went, he just picked me up with <laughs> one hand. One hand just picked me up. I'm gonna try I that. have never seen anybody. I've known some very strong and powerful men. But the, the, his thumb going into my shoulder, the way he squeezed it, Dang. and then just picked Dang. me up. I've never seen oh, that yeah. before. And I will never see another man be able to do that. <laughs> Not to a man my size. It was unbelievable to see. Well, I see that all the yeah, time. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I think the big. I mean, I do that. I do that all the time. Do you, Bash? Just pick them right up. <laughs> yeah. Boy, yeah. Barbara, Barbara does it all the time. Like, Hell all the time. yeah! All right, Barbara. That's her go-to right. move in the clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a boy. <laughs> like this. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, Andre the Giant was, was huge too, and he was larger than life when I met him. It was, it was yeah. surreal because I remember seeing him when I was little, and then full circle in Las Vegas when we were performing, they were performing, and uh, they had a show there. And he's like, um, and he was hitting the bottle. I mean, that guy can drink. Oh. I don't know what it was, a, a fifth of whiskey, or whatever. And he wrapped his hand like it went around, and he just hold, he goes, "Hold on, Sonny, we're having a conversation." He goes. And he reaches behind the um, bleachers and he grabs this thing of alcohol. I don't know, whiskey or whatever. And I watched him guzzle it like water. I was like, oh my God, look at him. And I'm looking way up. 
right? I mean, the guy's <laughs> larger than I. And but seven, so seven gentle. Foot four, five hundred pounds. Crazy. Yes, yes, and so sweet though. Such a sweet demeanor. I mean, a big teddy bear, and it was heartbreaking when he. I mean, what a life he had. Yeah. The documentary was was pretty good and right on. Um, but yeah, we're, we're big show is pretty good like that too. He's sweet, oh, big oh. guy, you know. So the you Rock, we hang out. Uh, people hit me up with The Rock and think that I can get Dwayne, you know, even my own family. Can can you get his autograph? We love him, and I'm like, I know, but you know, so do I. You know, we see him at the CAC, the Cauliflower Alley Club. He just joined as a lifetime member finally. So I've been going for ten years, and that's our wrestling reunion, in Las Vegas. His mother, Ada, shows up every year. She loves wrestling. Dwayne's mom is the cutest little woman. She's so sweet and so endearing, you know. And Dwayne is too. I mean, he's a really good guy, really sweet. So but no, I can't run and get his autograph, you know. They're like, can you please? And I'm like, <coughs> sure. Let me just call up and get it, you know. So of all the wrestlers that you have been around, as far as males, men, um, mm -hmm. who's, who's your most favorable? Well, the one that I loved and I think, um, and again, I'm old school, which I appreciate the old school wrestling because it was a different style. Hey, Stax Calhoun. There you go. There's another one. But I like the Destroyer and Classy Blassie only because he put the fear in me when I was little. I watched him come out with that cane and all the blood and, and he was in the cage. And it was just like, wow, it looks so real to me. You know, um, there's many. I mean, there's so what many. About, and again. What, what about Lou Albano? Lou, oh gosh. We love Lou and Cindy Lauper. They were love Lou. Lou, man. Thought about him. Yep. Lou. Yeah, Lou TV, Albano, baby. He was a good one. Now, a now good with, one. with all that you, like, that we're talking about, right? You have this deep experience mm -hmm. with childhood acting, Glow, Hugh Hefner, Playboy, TV shows, all of these cool things, great friends. At one moment in your life, when you and I first had a conversation, it was based on the fact that you were getting your breast implants removed. Um, yes, that's right, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you had the X, and uh, you know, Daniel has the insight X on that. Yeah, Barbara has insight on that. We did a show on that with a model by the name of Katharina Vanderham, good friend of mine. And of all the shows we've done, which at this moment is close to 30, the number one organic interest of any show we've ever done, all the people we've had on the show, is on explants to this day. There's a huge interest in it. And so I would love to kind of get your insight on that. And I'm sure these guys have questions as well. Like, what did that, how did that come about, the story around that, to how are you feeling today after having them removed? Okay, so I got him um, actually in, in, in 1995, um, and I was always a full C cup, so I wasn't the typical, like, I didn't need him. I was pretty well endowed already. Um, I think the hype of showbiz, again, being a model for so many years um, in my lifetime, which I kind of, you know, focused on the swimwear body, everything had to be perfect, and I breastfed um, my one daughter and then I had Shana so my right boob wasn't exactly perfect as the left so I thought well okay maybe I'll go in and get a lift so I went to a plastic surgeon and instead of getting a lift they sold me on implants because um, it is all about the money let's face it plastic surgery is one of the highest <laughs> money makers and especially in our business so um, I was terrified but I Said, sure okay I'll take the implants but I didn't want silicone because I knew silicone was bad you know I studied it before I went there and he said uh, no these are saline I said great so I got him in and I was like now a full C maybe D cup and it has it kind of is, um, how do I say this it was relative to Playboy but not but because I knew I was going to do Playboy I thought oh what the heck yeah implants oh this will be great but then I heard Hef didn't like implants. He didn't, he wanted natural as much as possible in Playboy, which, you know, whatever, you know, most of the girls did have implants. Um, so 
you know, I got him in. Full circle, I didn't get checkups. I didn't get um, mammograms. I was fearful that it would hurt my implant because after I got him in, I would say three months, I started feeling like there was a uh, tightening on one of the uh, implants. I'm like, this is weird. So I went to the doctor and they said, Oh no, you're fine. Um, probably five years later, I had um, capsular construction, which is capsular um, contracture, not construction, sorry. And it tightens up. So it's where it collapses, the muscle freezes around it to protect the implant. So it's like, scar tissue, if you will. So I had that really bad on one side. And then, you know, being in boxing, I went into boxing and some MMA stuff because I love that. I love the sport. Um, I injured the left side, so I had a rupture. And I could feel it. I knew I had a rupture, the saline. I could feel it like leaking when I'm jogging or I'm at the gym on the treadmill. And I would get dizzy and feel crappy. And I go to the doctor and they're like, well, we can't, we don't have anything. We, they take blood and they're looking at my blood. They're like, oh no, this is, you're fine. Everything's good. I still feel it and feel it. And I feel weak and sick. And I didn't discover the breast implant illness uh, site, which is on Facebook by Nicole Deruda. And I think there are over 200,000 women in, in the group now. Um, I went to um, a plastic surgeon after getting a notice on Facebook and other places that implants were being recalled for lymphoma, CDL1 and 2, which is a rare form of cancer. And so I went to my plastic surgeon and uh, back in Newport Beach, I don't know how, my friend helped me remember the guys, I didn't even know his name. The original surgeon retired, but the guy that was with him is still there and he's operating in Newport Beach. So I went in and he goes, do you know that your implants are on recall for cancer? I'm like, no. I never got a notice, obviously that many years, what, 25 years, I moved around and stuff. So I never got that notice. And uh, turns out I got tested and yeah, the casing around the implant is what contains the cancer. So the casing is silicone. So no matter what, you're still holding silicone. Even though your implants are saline, you've got silicone base, which is around the case. And that's what was the cancer. So um, I found a surgeon in Bakersfield, Dr. Nyer, who, by the way, is going to do the show with me on Dr. Oz. He's brilliant. He sits on the board for cancer, for the Breast Cancer um, Institute and stuff. He's really, really good. And he did my surgery and we got him out. And when he took them out, it took the casing with him. So the lymphoma, the leakage, I don't know if it's in there, which I hope to God not. I go for testing the next couple months. It's going to be a long road, but I feel great since I got them out. Um, I have no regrets. Um, it was stupid for me to even get them in because I was married at the time and my husband and I pretty much divorced almost over it. We got in a big argument. I had my best friend take me to the plastic surgeon place because he wouldn't go. He's like, thought I was nuts, you know. So yeah, there's a lot of memories with that, but God, I'm thankful I can go run now and jog and not worry about pain. And, and I would wear a jog bra, I don't know, for how many years, 20 years. And honestly, I divorced, there's my, sorry, it's my puppy. Um, I, I wore a jog bra ever since, even when I would go to bed, I wear a jog bra and I divorced my husband and then I started dating again. And, uh, my boyfriend's like, why are you wearing a jog bra? Because I hated my boobs. Everyone loved him. Like all the guy, oh my God, you're gorgeous. You have the best boobs. And I hated them. I hated the fact that I got them and I knew what it was doing to me. You know, um, I got a low autoimmune disease from it. I have Hashimoto's from it. Um, you know, it's got a lot of effects to the body. Hair loss, um, brittle nails, you get tired. You don't have energy. Um, and I'm still fighting it because it takes time since I've had him in for 25 years, which is, you know, I'm 55. So figure that on that. The doctor said for every year, it's going to take a long time for your body to detox all the toxins that that left, you know, behind in your body and the effect. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. I just want to ask to like, you did say that you had him in for 25 years, but did you say that pretty much early on you felt like they were leaking? Is that what you were saying? Yeah. 
Yeah, I could feel it. I could feel it like, um, and I was right too, because when the surgeon, when I went to the surgeon to get him out, they had to do all these things. And he said, your right one it was stuck to the side. It was embedded to the muscle and laying like almost on your rib cage. Like they can attach to your rib cage. And all this, who would have thought? Like, ew, that just sounds gross, you know? And inside the implant, you can even get mold. Mine did not. I didn't have mold in my implant. But a lot of women that are getting theirs removed, it's mold. And, and they show the implant. It's disgusting. And, and, and you and know the, what mold does, you know? And the, and the, and the most prevalent problem in the uh, removal or what's called explanting is that the actual... Um, implant itself a capsule forms around the implant naturally your body surrounds it and forms this hard capsule and so when you're taking the implant out if you don't what's being scraped off that rib cage is not the implant it's the capsule that adheres yes. to the bone structure if you don't get that capsule in its entirety out the pieces of it inside there that have the mold in it will continue to make you sick throughout it must it's be removed in its entirety pro properly. Yes. There's a doctor in um, Cleveland, Dr. Chin, who's been doing it for- Dr. Oh, Chin is great. Yeah, yes. she's, yes. she's probably the leader, um, uh, you know, as far as uh, who's been doing it the longest and everything. And, you know, and this surgery is so traumatic to the women's system because we're talking about taking a file and scraping the bone and get these pieces that have adhered. Because if you don't get them out, they have that mold in them and they continue to send toxins through your body and they can continue to grow even after the implant is taken out. So you must get all of that capsule taken out. It's imperative or you can get very sick for the rest of your life. Which is called in block. And that's what I had a complete in block. And yes. a lot of surgeons won't do it. Yeah. Like some surgeons will go in and leak out the fluids. And that's it. Some surgeons will just go out and take out the sac. But in block is a complete scraping of uh, the chest cavity and even more so, even all the way to the back. It just depends where the pieces lay. And I just had mine done in January. So January 14th. And um, yeah, so, um, you know, I feel 10 times better. My skin is like, I, I had like drier skin, like I was always putting lotion on. Just certain things like that, because the saline, of course, is very drying, and that was leaking in my body for years, and I had no clue until this group, because there's 60 BII symptoms. Lupus comes from that. A lot of these symptoms can come from the implant. So now um, the FDA is going to put um, a black box on it by saying, enter at your own risk, because we've pushed for it and pushed for it and pushed for it um, for someone to believe that this is the case because they don't want to believe that implants get girls sick, you know, that this can't be the case or cause cancer. But now, you know, there's many lawsuits. I'm in one lawsuit already for mine. Um, so, you know, hopefully it'll go because the shutdown and everything, but uh, I'm in a mass tort suit because my particular brand and serial number, because you get a little piece of paper for each, they call it mechanical yeah. device, first of all. So, you know, their devices in the medical world. And a lot of surgeons still don't believe it, that they're harmful. But the FDA is going to put, uh, enter at your own risk, that this causes harmful effects, cancer, different toxins and things like that. So a lot of women nowadays are not getting the implants in. They're explanting more than implants. So that's a big movement right there. There is still some that are very, you know, determined like I was back then to get implants, but you know, I try to talk women out of it and say, you don't want this. It's going to destroy your life. And plus, who wants cancer? And this is a rare form, too, and it's a fast-spreading, you know, cancer. So, yeah, in block, a, a surgeon has to do a complete in block. Otherwise, you can still be sick. And, um, and of course, the low autoimmune disease stays with you. It doesn't go away. Unfortunately, for me, it's too late. I'll always have that for the rest of my life. But I don't mind. You know, I'm glad I got him out. The best thing I could ever do. Wow. So. Well, I mean, it's great that you are in a place where you still want to, you know, get the word out and help other people. 
because we live in you know a world now where Instagram modeling, uh, wannabe modeling, all of that's like it's very important to a lot of these young ladies, and one of the the precursors to being what they want to be on Instagram is having a body that has the symmetry that oftentimes comes about by either getting breast implant and or butt implant. Or butt implants now are big, yeah. Or the cheekbones, you know. Yeah, somebody. Gosh, last, the last girl I touched on, the, on her bottom, I was like, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Was it like Marty's a rock or what? <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a joke. <laughs> oh. Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> but you know, like back well, in the know, day, you could touch a girl's bottom and she go, hey, who did that? And, you know, like, boom. Boom. Right. Boom. <laughs> and, and all the things going on. That hasn't stopped you, Robert. That hasn't stopped you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look what's going on with Cuba Gooding. I mean, this guy is like facing all kinds of charges just because he touched someone on the rear end. I mean, come on. Well, you know, you know what the right. answer to it is? You can do all the same things that you used to do back in the day. You just got to be wait to be asked now. <laughs> <laughs> seriously you know what i mean i mean like you don't you know you, you really i can see a woman's point where uh, you know and i've never been in a situation like somebody like barbara who's posed you know and done things and you know where a man would just without even asking but but there have been a few times when i've been in you know in a situation where and suddenly i'm going to take the picture and the woman reaches out and grabs my ass or whatever and it, it's very startling to go hey yeah. you know, and I'm with my wife, you know, and I know if she saw that, she'd be upset. And it's very awkward, you know. It's very awkward to have someone inappropriately touch you. Yeah, so, that's, I think that's imagine. I can't. That's time for a right hook. No, no, no. You guys, you guys are both. again, Because look, it's okay if a woman touches my rear. It's okay, no matter who it is. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, hey, doesn't matter. It could be, you know, one of those, you know, those big time wrestlers back in the day. Now you know why you're paying alimony for me. But anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Baby, it's okay if she if she wants to touch my ass, she should be able to touch my ass. All right, so 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 Patricia, we want to do a little rapid fire with you. We have about a good 10 to 12 minutes left. And so we're just gonna go back and forth. So we're gonna ask you some questions. And you know, the answer could be one second long. It could be 30 seconds, but you know, you wrap it back and uh, we're just gonna kind of have some fun with it. Sound like a plan? Okay, let's do it. So, so I'll start, then we'll go to Barbara and Daniel and then we'll uh, continue that cycle. Uh, so my first question is, I know you have been friends with Todd Bridges for a whole long, very long time. You guys have a really cool relationship. When you hear Todd Bridges' name, what comes to mind? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Hey, Barbara. Um, I would say, ask you, um, with all the things that you've done, are there any misconceptions you feel people have about you? Yes, that I'm too nice and I'm really blonde, which neither one I can kick ass and I'm the one that'll beat someone up over bullying. Ooh. Ooh. I'm pretty, yeah. So in other words, yeah, I beat, well, it's in my comic book. So I had to do that with my brother, my brother um, that I lost in 85 to suicide because he was bullied. So on the way to school, people were cruel to him and picking on him. And the same, and these were girls, believe it or not. A lot of them were girls, some were, were boys, but I would say meet me on the corner and sure enough, we're brawling. So my character in Glow, I lost all the time. I was the dingy blonde that, ha oh, ha, so nice. Well, no, that's not me. So <laughs> long story short, yep, I love to box. I'll take you down. Love it. So, nice. Yep. <laughs> All right, Daniel. So Daniel's nervous now since he knows what you can do. <laughs> I'm nervous. So I know my question. Oh, no, let's go. Already. I know my question already. You ready? So you've risen to the highest levels in your field in wrestling, in modeling. You no, know, not a lot of people can say they're on the cover of Playboy. So in this next chapter, and it's not the final chapter, 
in, only in our 50s. But in this next chapter, what do you want to become? Um, I want to become an advocate and to show women out there to be powerful and strong and to guide them in the right way and not make the mistakes that I did because I have a book coming out, which is my autobiography and, and it's being written. I'm going to do a shout out Scott Stevens who has Twister, Deadly Roses, many books out there. He's doing my book, which is made for screenplay for lifetime on the stalking and speaking of me too, the real rape victims. I'm not discounting women who have said, well, they've been touched because when you've really been raped, and I mean, you know, attacked and viciously raped is a big difference. And again, I feel for all women, but when they say they touch my ass or they touch my shoulder, what, please, you know, grow up, grow some balls <laughs> in this big world and be powerful. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah, I want this next part of my life to be an example and to help all women out there and women who have girls, children like I do. I have my daughters and they're both beautiful. Um, and I teach my daughter every day because she's so naive still. and She's so sweet. And I'm like, don't fall for it. You know, don't go. That guy's an ass. <laughs> there goes my dog. I have a, a bull mastiff lab. He's out there barking. Nice. But um, yeah, so that would be the best part of my life. I'm a grandmother. I have two grandsons. So I just want to see them grow up and be happy in this world. Um, you know, that's, that's going to be the better part of my life. For sure, you know, because it's crazy. We're in a crazy time, especially with the COVID nineteen and everything going around. You know, I can't even see them right now for like two and a half months. Right. It sucks. Okay. You know? So, so, yeah. that, so, so, my question is: You're around a lot of people, a lot of famous people, people with money, the Hugh Hefners of the world. Um, and if you're open to answering this, because um, I know you're always honest, but openly honest. Uh, Hugh Hefner okay. does have a uh, perception of ladies' men, um, and he did a great job at branding that. And with all the time you spent around Hugh Hefner, are you saying he never hit on you, or you just weren't his type, or would you remain, you don't want to just keep that off the record? No, he never did. He never did. Um, like I said, I thought he hated me because the similarity of me and his ex-wife, who was right next door. They're, they're connected. They're, well, it was. I don't know if it still is, but um, the Playboy Mansion and his ex-wife's house. So, and I, the, here comes the irony of it. My best friend, Memory, and that's her name, is Memory. She was the nanny for Hep Kids. And later this on. Day, I, rem I remember, I remember her. Friend. Ha Yeah. Remember. Ha -ha. <laughs> well, you know what, Ferg, now so, that... Now that now that we're doing full full disclosure, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna announce it now. I slept with Hefner. I admit it. I slept with him. <laughs> you know, it was it was a, it was a late night. Everyone had fallen asleep, and I, I'm not gonna go into details. But yes, I slept with him. Where is robe after? Did you, did you get a pair of bunny ears? <laughs> yeah. I, all I want to tell you is I was pitching. He was catching. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh. <laughs> You spent a lot of time there. Woo. And I see you in that green room. I thought so. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Daniel's got some stories. Yeah, he's All rocking right. the robe. Okay, Barbara? Oh, let's see. Okay, um, besides Daniel, Robert, and myself, um, what three people, they could be dead or alive, would you want to have dinner with? Oh, goodness. Um, geez, have dinner with. Well, it's got to be, they got to be single since I'm single. <laughs> now, are you really, now, are you really single or are you just saying that? No, I really am. Yeah. No, because people say they're I, single, um, but yet they're dating. <laughs> I know. Right? No, I mean, I've had like some relationships here and there, but since my husband died, I, I just, um, it's like a fear of mine. And I told my daughter that I'm like, I don't know. And especially if they're taking pain pills, like if they're on Vicodin or Norco, it's a no go for me because <laughs> that's what my husband died. That's what he died from. So mm. I just can't do it. So yeah. Um, wow. 
I would say, and you guys are probably going to hate me, but would I have dinner now probably? Because I knew him back a while ago through a director friend of mine. Trump definitely want to pick his brain. Um, I yeah. knew it was going to be Trump. I knew I, it. How would you know? <laughs> hey, I'm okay with Trump. Barbara's a hater. Daniel's <laughs> quiet about it. But hey. I know. How, how Tar- Barbara, Daniel? Barbara hates Trump. <laughs> Bar- Barbara hates Trump. Yeah, she's a Demo- She's a California. But I'm Demo- not a fan. <laughs> I know. I know. I wasn't a fan. You know, I was raised Democrat and uh, conservative, actually Democrat. But I flipped to Republican, and uh, yeah, for several reasons. And uh, yeah, you know, I voted for, as they call her, Hillary. I actually voted for Hillary, and maybe that was just a the root for the woman for president yeah. thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I totally, totally get it. <laughs> um, and you know, I would have to say, wow, there's so many, but <laughs> I would sit down with Vince McMahon because of his current craziness and ask him why he fired so many of the great wrestlers in, including Rusev, which is a good friend of mine because he wanted a million and not only 600,000, but he let go a lot of a lot of them. So, you know, that's not cool. Um, and Steven Spielberg, I think would be oh. the, the third. Yeah, Steven, I have great respect for Steven Spielberg. Cool. So, yeah, those, yeah. All right, Probably then. kind of boring, but whatever, you know, hey. Here's, I, got got last, I got my last question. <laughs> go ahead. I got my last question, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So hopefully it's not for another 50 years, but <clears throat> you die and you're going into the gates of heaven and Jesus Christ is standing there and says, why should I let you in? Oh, well, Jesus, because I'm sunny. You need the sun up above you. <laughs> You need to let me in because I washed away all my sins. Of there course. Go. There it is. Right? Absolutely. I do believe in, yeah. I, I was raised Christian, so amen to that. Well, that was a there great question, uh, Barbara and Daniel. I mean, those are like, those are yeah. both powerful. It made me think, like, who are the three people? I, you know, I got to think about that. <laughs> Barbara was going to ask. And those two were, and by the way, bra. they were single. So I, don't, I wouldn't want to date them, but. Actually, all three of them I wouldn't because none of them are, but <laughs> I just so want to pick their brain. Hey, when someone says they're single, that does not mean they're single. That's what I've learned. Is you that- have such a thing about this. You were, <laughs> t- you were talking about this on Facebook. You put a big post out about it. What's with these chicks? So you have some bad experience, some chick that broke your heart no. that you found out she was married, and ah, she pulled you right in for No, her. no, it's not that. It's it's. Like, if you go on Facebook, they have the little title that says single, and then you talk to them for five minutes, and it's like, well, let me talk to my boyfriend about that. Like, what? Right. You said you were single. <laughs> yeah, so they are you're... single, Fergie. They just, they got on to you, and they dropped the lie as the boyfriend because they didn't want to have nothing to do with you, Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Oh. That's, like the chick, that's like the chick that you see, you look at her hand, and she doesn't have a ring on then you start macking on her. You look down. She's got a ring, big old rock on her finger that's in her bag. She's like, "Bye, yeah. Fer." No, see, Bye. I wouldn't know about that. You wouldn't know about that, Dan. Don't I fake it, Fer. I saw a girl do it to you, in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Tina. I saw Tina do it to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Babs, ugly. Babs. It's an ugly Robert affair. is in love with this girl that I call <laughs> Tina. Yeah, I, won't real, I won't say her real name, but he's in love with this girl. All right, so describe this girl. Tell them about this girl, Daniel. The girl that he lo- that he's in love with <laughs> is like half Caucasian, half half uh, Latina, uh, mm-hmm. and literally she has a butt that enters the room two zip codes after her feet do. I mean, she's got so baby got she's back. Got Wait, baby got right? back. Man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna pull a picture of her. Yeah, it's just the back. <laughs> this is a picture. Every time Robert brings her up, I send this picture to him. Yeah, he sends me a picture of uh, of someone who's got probably a 60 inch hips, 
Um, I send her a picture. This is her. He just this wants her. someone this to put her. a glass. This is, this is her the day Robert met her. I took the picture at the banquet. Yeah, OK. Uh -oh. is, Let's see it. Her. Yeah, I, I have oh, to see okay. this picture, Patricia. Oh, uh, you got to see it. You got to see it now. Talk That's about exaggerating. <laughs> Wait, you have to. <laughs> he found something. You have I some can't see it. Oh, you have to send it to me. What? You have to post it on Facebook I mean, and say this is. Uh oh, here it comes. Robert's picture. Uh oh. Whoa, Wait, her butt's real? there first, right? No. It's real. <laughs> that's Tina. Is yeah. that real? Yeah, I wake up every day thinking about Tina. Look at that. <laughs> that's not photoshopped or anything. That's Tina, baby. So don't be so gullible, there, Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> So he wants That's somewhere Tina. to put his water, right? To rest it's his water. Time. You could put a tank of gasoline for a <laughs> Mack truck in that. Okay. That's Tina, baby. <laughs> All right. Well, uh. Oh. <laughs> well, that's what we got for the stay healthy experience today. <laughs> Look at Fergie. So we're going to go out on that, man. Back, you can't beat back. that. Go out on that. <laughs> Well, I just wanted to say, to, I wanted to say to Patricia that how much we appreciate her making time. Yes, ma'am. Come on our show. And we definitely, as you move forward with your other projects and movies and documentaries and, and your books, and it would be great to have you back on. Just let us know when, when the time is right. Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll definitely do this. Once I get on Zoom and the laptop and the internet, we're, we're all good at once. Yeah. And then, you know, I'll talk to Todd and let's do... Uh, if I get down there, we can go on with Todd. I'll make him, you know, feel comfortable so you can do it. Well, now, he's got to get the okay from his management, but now is Todd he is he still in uh, in recovery right now? No, he's he's been done with that for years and years and years. He's doing good. I'm okay, so proud no, of him. I'm saying not in recovery as in uh, uh, like going through it right now, but you're asking is he still sober? Yes. I know. That's the, yeah. No, he's very sober. He's been okay. really, really good. Yeah. yeah. Was, for years. I think it's that, been, uh, for him, it's been 22 years, even in something like that. Now that would yeah. be a good, that would be a good show to do that, Daniel, like with the uh, joy of mom, you and him yeah. talking about addiction. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah. I think that would be very yeah. like, like awesome. Yeah, being. For sure. Cause all those moms remember Todd Bridges. They know the Baldwin's, um, It'd be a real, you know, and Daniel's always very candid and straight up about it. And in my brief interaction with Todd Bridges some years ago, he was very, very kind and uh, didn't seem to be embarrassed at all about the fact that he is sober and is living that life. Absolutely not. You can't. I mean, you know, and we've all been through it. I went to Radford for a while. I was in there for some counseling because I got in a little bit of, uh, well, whatever. We're not going to. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I was on the other side for a little bit. I was like kind of a setup, but I was dibble dabbling some crazy things because I got involved with Israelis and, you know, some stuff. But I ended up getting a drug and counseling license out of it. But I was at Radford for a while and I remember looking over and there was um, Demi Lovato. She was there. So I felt like, hey, this is all good because when people find out <laughs> that you were someone on TV, it, it kind of gets, you feel more, how do I, what's, what's the word I'm looking for, Daniel? Not like, it, it was just hard. I was like, oh, you're that glow wrestler? Aren't you an athlete? Why did you do drugs? How come you're in here for drugs? You know, and they would just go at it. And I felt like, I would just like <laughs> go down on my seat. Just like, all right, uh, yeah, well, I did. Yes, I did. I got caught with some, yes. You know, not proud of it, but. It, you get through it. You go on. You learn. You know. You and my daughter the same way. I teach her. You know, stay away from any of that stuff. Don't let people get you down. Don't drink. Don't be the last one to drink. You know. Don't get behind the wheel drunk and stuff like that. You've got to be, you know, a good parent. And right. uh, but Todd's very forthright, and uh, I appreciate him talking about it. Yeah, he's pretty. Uh, I'm sure he would enjoy the show. Absolutely. Yeah, actually, Todd was, uh, Daniel, Todd was on the cover of uh, one of Soba's magazines, Recovery Today. I, 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 got, I got all Todd's numbers and stuff, man. We can figure okay. it out. Cool. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thank you, Patricia. We appreciate you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful. Uh, thank you, Daniel and Barbara Thanks, and uh, Robert. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll definitely do, uh, let's do a let's do a part two, okay? Absolutely. And Love when, to. And when things open up and we're back to normal, then we'll let's talk you into driving up the Ventura so we can have you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, that'd be fun. Let's do it. I'm halfway there, off the 126. To, yeah, I think it's about an hour and a half. Not too bad. Not too bad. Cool. All right. So yeah. until then. We can all, we can all, all right. plug. <laughs> yeah. Big group, big Take group hug. Thank you, guys. Thanks for, right. thanks, And Barb. have a wonderful, blessed day. Yes. Thank you. You Bye. too. Thank you.